Good morning, church. Good morning, church. Good morning and win today. Win tomorrow. And win forever. Shall we put our hands together and clap for the Lord? Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for the life you give. It is time for God's message. We know that God speaks to us through his word. We are blessed by the word of God. We are here today because God's word said, we should come. The Bible in the book of Hebrews 10 verse 25 says, to you, children of God, say do not cease from coming together. Don't give up meetings to encourage yourself. Father, here we are to encourage ourselves. Give us your word and make us doers of the words in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You may have your seat. As a true Christian, a true follower of Christ Jesus, if you are to know a good life, a successful life, a prosperous life. You simply need Jesus Christ to direct your ways. If you are to move forward and live in your aspiration, you are to emulate our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Because a true follower of Christ Jesus speaks the word of faith in the fashion of your master. As a child of God, you should speak the word of faith in the fashion of your master. Because faith will make you to move in the way that God moves. Faith will make you to operate in the dimension that God operates. The Bible in the book of Acts of Apostles 10 verse 38 says, now, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, during his earthly ministry, went about doing good. Christ went about doing good, mending lives, building lives. He went about doing good to the just and unjust, to the deserve and undeserve. And Christ is still doing the same today. Yes, he's still doing the same today. Through you. He wants to do more if only you will allow him to do it. Christ has no eye that it is your eye that he will use to see those who I need. It is your leg that he will use to go to places to bring men to himself. Your hand he will use to walk. Christ is still doing good today. He still goes about doing good. Know that evidence of Christ Jesus in your life is life change. Whatever you confess today, oh, I'm a child of God. Oh, I'm a believer. Oh, I'm a Christian. The evidence of such confession in your life is life change. Drawing from God resources to make your life change. Drawing from God resources to make your life better. But has this become a reality? Has this become a reality? Have you beginning to see this change in your life? Change from glory to glory to more glory. From grace to grace and more grace. Change from where you are right now to where God wants you to be, a better place. From grass to grace. Has that become a reality? Sadly, this has not become a reality in so many lives. It has not become a reality in so many lives. You simply need Jesus Christ 
to direct your ways. You need him. Do you do good? Ask someone, do you do good? Do you love? You love people. Do you help? Do you do good without any condition attached to your goodness? Have you forgiven and reconciled with those who hurt you? Who wrong you? Deep hurt. These questions are very vital. Because today, the prayer most people offer against their brothers and sisters, prayer of desperation, does not show that they love. The prayer that most people offer today against their brothers and sisters does not show that they love. But it shows that Satan is still planting seed of discord among brothers and sisters. Friends and family, children of God, even nations, to break the relationship and fellowship which our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ came to restore with his precious blood. God's help is free and full. Let someone say, God's help is free and full. Unconditional. The help of God is free and full. It is unconditional. I just want you to remember. Remember that whatever you may happen to people, God will make happen to you. If you love, you give, you help unconditional, you will never lack. God Almighty will never allow you to lack. Just know that whatever you may happen to others, God will make happen to you. And so the Bible tells us in the book of Luke 6, verse 37 and 38, say, judge not so that you will not be judged. Condemn not so that you will not be condemned. Forgive so that you will be forgiven. Give and it will be given back to you. Good measure, praise, and shaking together, running over, will be poured into your lap. For the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. The measure you use, that is what it will be used for you. And this will bring us to our message today. Growing in Christ-likeness. Let someone say, growing in Christ-likeness. I want to hear somebody say, growing in Christ-likeness. And our proof test for this message shall be taken from the Bible in the book of 1 Timothy. First Timothy 6, verse 18 and 19. And I read. It says, Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. In this way, they will lay up treasures for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age, so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. To take hold of life that is truly life. Command them to do good. Teach them to do good. Instruct them to do good. So that they may take hold of life that is truly life. To take hold of life that is truly life means that they are life that is not truly life. It means that they are life that is not truly life. Many life we claim to be living today, or some life we claim to be living today, is not truly life, but fake life. Let someone say fake life. Fake Let me hear somebody say fake life. Fake life. Pretentious life. Fake Questionable life. It says, command them to do good, so that they may take hold of life that is truly life. Many 
meaning they are life that is not truly life. And that is the life many of us are living today. Conversion is once in a lifetime. Let someone say conversion is once in a lifetime. Conversion is once in a lifetime. But Christ's likeness is forever. Christ's likeness is forever. We all live in the world that is not perfect. We are living in the world that is not perfect. We have limitations. We are handicapped in one way or the other. Perfection eludes every one of us. And so the Bible says to you, in the book of Ecclesiastes 7, verse 20, it says there is no one on earth who does good, who is righteous. Nobody on earth who is righteous. Nobody who does right without sin. Do you have any problem with that? That is the truth. There's no one who is righteous. Anyone want to dispute that? I'm talking to you. This scripture went further to say in the book of Psalm 12, verse 2. It says, everybody lies to his neighbor. Everyone. Everybody lies to his neighbor. They flatter with their lips, their tongue, harbor deception in their heart. Everybody lies to their family, to their neighbor. They flatter with their tongues, but harbor what? Deception in their hearts. So there we go. Ah. You are the air that I'm breathing. Keep on flattering you. You pleaded with God before I was conceived. I love you, Pastor, my mama. You are the Moses that will take us to the promised land where milk and honey flows. They flatter with their tongues. They have a deception in their heart. Now, if everyone lies to his neighbor, who can we believe? Ah, I don't want this chorus answer. We came here individually. You want to answer? Let us hear you. If everyone lies to his neighbor, who then can we believe? Mm -mm. Please, who wants to talk? We want to hear that voice. Uh, let's hear you. Come out, sir. The Bible says that everyone lies to his neighbor. Do you believe that? Yes, it's true. And if everyone lies to his neighbor, who then can we believe? Only God Almighty. Only God. Is that true? If everyone lies to his neighbor, and it seems we cannot believe in anyone, we know we can believe God. Yes, we can trust God. My brother, ah, we're in the synagogue. You have answered question. <laughs> oh my God. Who else wants to answer? Uh-huh. Who do we believe? We believe God. We believe God. That is right. Thank you, Jesus. Please go over there and have your fruit. Thank you very much. So if everyone lies to his neighbor, and it seems as if there's no one to believe, no one to trust, we know we can trust God. God is not a man that lies. He's not a son of man that speaks without fulfilling. And so my brethren, examine yourself. Say to somebody, examine yourself. Examine yourself. Examine yourself as to discover your weakness. You know them. You know your shortcomings. You know your limitations. But many, because of sheer pride, will not own up to them. They will not own up to their weaknesses because of pride. 
See them going about pretending as if all is well. They go about as if all is well. Fake life. Questionable life. Pretentious life. There is no shortcut to salvation. Say to someone, there is no shortcut to salvation. No shortcut to salvation. Get rid of pride. And receive God's wisdom. Except you are delivered from your weaknesses and its penalties. You cannot accept Jesus Christ in your heart, in truth and in faith. Except you are delivered from your weaknesses and its penalties, you will not accept Jesus Christ in your heart, in spirit and in truth. The scripture says in the book of Romans 6 verse 1, it says you can continue to sin and expect God's grace to abound. You cannot continue to sin and expect the grace of God to abound in your life. Just consider how you have been using your tongue for negative confection. You talk so much that you don't realize that you are blaspheming against God Almighty. Use your tongue for negative confection. Man points of view is limited and cannot understand God. God's point of view is as high as this, and so man's point of view cannot understand it. You attract so much temptation to yourself by so many companions you keep giving you advice on the natural, flattering you with their lips. Everyone lies to his neighbor. Flatter you with their tongue, but have a deception in their hearts. You attract so much temptation to yourself by all these companions you keep. Who flatters you with their tongue? And so you go about condemning, criticizing everyone around you. Propagating all manners of lies. Whose sons and daughters are you? Whose sons and daughters are you? Many are driven by uncontrollable urge for whatever. They are so much in love with power, with money, with position that they can kill, they can steal, they can destroy. On whose account? Not your heavenly father that I know of. My brethren. We live in the world that is not perfect. God's love does not promise to keep us away from the world. Even as we are confronted daily by its temptations. The love of God does not promise to keep us away from the world. But he promised to see us true. And so now, let us consider the mission of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The Bible says that he came to restore the fellowship, the relationship between God and man. He came to heal, to save, to deliver, to make whole. But if a sinner must experience the joy of forgiveness and freedom, he must be willing to admit that he is a sinner in need of salvation. If a sinner must experience the joy of forgiveness, freedom that Christ came to offer, he must admit that he is a sinner in need of salvation. He must know that Jesus Christ loves him or her and died for him or her. That is the only way his joy can be full. That is the only way the joy can be full. And so right now, we are going to confess our weaknesses before God. Any time can be the right time for that. 
as you are sitting now, you will confess your weaknesses before God. You know them. Confess your weaknesses before God. So let someone say, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ. Say, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ. I, surrender. I surrender. I surrender. I surrender. To your will. To your, will. To your way. To your way. I, want to you I want to know you more. I want to hear your voice. I, hear your voice. I, confess, my I confess my weaknesses. Deliver me and forgive me. In Jesus' name. Amen. It is done. Yes, it is done. That is the beginning of repentance. No one will receive forgiveness except through faith. When Saul was delivered of his weakness, the light of God flashed around him and within him. New life. The evidence of Christ Jesus in your life is life change. Saul, who became Paul the Apostle, when he was delivered of his weaknesses, the light of God flashed around and within him. He began to grow in Christ's likeness. From that moment, Conversion is once in a lifetime, but Christ's likeness is forever. Saul, who persecuted Christians ignorantly, persecuting Christ Jesus, like many of us are doing today, like we are doing today, with our words and action. When he was delivered of his weaknesses, a new life began. Growing in Christ's likeness day by day and hour by hour. So who are you? Ask someone, say, who are you? Ask your neighbor, who are you? Ah, are you a thief? Are you a liar? A fornicator? Who are you? Are you a murderer? A killer. Ah. You know, when we talk about killing, people thought by the time you pick up cutlass and machine gun, that is when you kill. People have killed many people with their mouth. Send them to prison. Bearing false witnesses. Who are you? A tell bearer. You are persecuting Jesus Christ with your attitude. Your character. And it's only God who will determine if one sin is greater than the other. And so turn with me to the book of James. The book of James. James 2. From verse 8 to 12. And I read. If you really keep the royal law found in Scripture, the royal law found in Scripture, love your neighbor as yourself, you are doing right. But if you show favoritism, you sin and are convicted by the law as lawbreakers. For whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point, is guilty of breaking all of it. For he who said, you shall not commit adultery, also said, you shall not murder. If you do not commit adultery, but you do commit murder, you have become a lawbreaker. Speak and act as those who are going to be judged by the law that gives freedom. The Bible says you should speak and act as those who are going to be judged one day by the law that gives what? Freedom. At this point, you should be thinking, what will it be like if Jesus Christ will be here now to demand of you an account of your life? What will it be like? Speak and act 
like those who will be judged one day by the law that gives freedom. At this moment, if Christ Jesus should come to demand from you an account of your life, what will it be like? To know God's presence is to know his power. Say to somebody to know God's presence is to know his power. To know God's presence is to know his power. Say it loudly. To know God's presence is to know his power. Acknowledge your weaknesses. First, acknowledge your weaknesses. Put yourself or be part of them by your confession and deliverance. Then you can press on in his time, in his ways, and his grace. If you cannot stand up for Jesus Christ, as a true Christian, a child of God, you can raise up your hand and say, Christ, I am here for you. You will certainly not be able to stand against Satan and his demons. Be an imitator of your heavenly father. Perfect imitator of your heavenly father. Growing in his likeness day by day and hour by hour. And that is in loving, in forgiving, in helping, in giving. If you obey the instructions of God, God Almighty will allow your life to speak for you. He will allow your life to speak for you. If you love people the way God loves you, you will naturally come across people who will show you true love, who will take your problems, your challenges, your pains as theirs. You will obtain true relationship and fellowship with others in times of needs and help. Only then, you can pray like Paul Apostle. In that book of Philippians 4 verse 19, says the Lord will supply all my needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. People of God, children of grace, God is faithful to fulfill all his promises to his beloved children. That is the good news. He is not a man that lies. God does not flatter. He's faithful to fulfill all his promises to you. That is the good news. The key, the security to your abundance, living in abundance, is given to the needy, unconditional. Giving to those who I need, unconditional. No agreement attached to your doing good. The love you show, the forgiveness you show, the help you render will attract measure of reward to you. But what does the man of God, Prophet T.B. Joshua, told us? I want to remind you now. He said, do not be expecting people to be clapping for you. Don't expect praise. Don't expect to be applauded by your beneficiaries because you'll be disappointed. Yes, you'll be disappointed. Be an imitator of your heavenly father who gives to the just and unjust, to the deserve and undeserved. Christ went about doing good, mending life, building life. And on the process, they call him names. Satan, king of Bozbo, they called him names. But he continued to cast out the same Satan from people's life. Be an imitator of your heavenly father. Christ was not doing this because he would need praise from men. He was focused. He never strived to look good. He was simply good. Christ never struggled to have good reputation. It had character. So do good. Jesus did. Say to someone, do good. 
Do good. Do good. Because Jesus did. Yes, he did. Children of grace. Growing in Christ likeness. That is our message. No state of being is as rewarding as living in tune with God. Obeying his commandments. Acting in his way. Give and you will be given. Help and you will be helped. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Give unconditionally and rely on Christ's sufficiency for all you need. And so I want to encourage you. Be strong in God's hand. Be strong in the mighty hand of God and his power. Take your stand against the seventh skin so that you will not be trapped. You will not be trapped. You will not be disappointed. You will not be flattered and miss the way. So that you will not be disfocused from running the straight race with God. I pray that God Almighty will bless this message in your heart. I'm leaving you here in faith. And I pray to meet you in faith in Jesus' name. God bless you.